In this video, we'll prove the main cutting theorem. Consider a set of n lines in the plane. We like to prove that there exists 1 over r cuttings of size r squared. I will assume the existence of 1 over r cuttings of size r cube. In the previous video, we proved the existence of cuttings of size r squared log n squared. So if r is big enough, the previous proof in fact uh, can be substituted instead of this value r cube. For small values of r, the previous proof is not sufficient. But uh, if r is a small, or in general, it's relatively small cuttings can be uh, shown to exist using the techniques from VC dimension area. Later in the course, we'll visit those techniques and we'll cover this assumption. Let's look at the previous proof strategy. We sample roughly r times log n lines and then we triangulate them. This will create roughly r squared log n squared triangles. And then we argue that with some probability, with some positive probability, all those triangles will have uh, a low crossing number. In other words, the number of lines intersecting each triangle will be small. The new proof strategy is similar. Instead of sampling r times log n lines, we sample r lines. And then we triangulate the arrangement. It turns out that most of the triangles that we obtain using this new proof strategy are fine. In other words, the, the number of lines intersecting each triangle is bounded by r over n, n over r. But it could happen that you might end up with a few bad triangles. In other words, there could be few triangles that intersect more than n over r lines. Therefore, they are illegal triangles. The idea is to fix them by cutting the lines and intersect them into, or by cutting such bad triangles into smaller triangles and thus uh, getting rid of them. To do that, first we need to start with a particular way of triangulating the arrangement. It turns out for this more complicated proof, we cannot just continue with an arbitrary triangulation. The triangulation that we like to uh, use is called bottom vertex triangulation. Consider a cell in the arrangement that is not a triangle. We pick the lowest vertex or the vertex with the smallest y coordinate and connect it to all the vertices in the cell. For example, in the picture using this bottom vertex triangulation, we have created three triangles inside this larger cell. Uh, for unbounded cells, we can use a bounding box method. In other words, we can assume that this shape is bounded inside a very big triangle, and thus we can assume that we have no unbounded cell. For now, I will ignore the unbounded cells. What are the main properties of bottom vertex triangulation? First, every triangle gets a defining set. The defining set of a triangle is denoted by d of delta. This bottom vertex triangulation has the three important properties. First, that the defining set of every triangle is constant size. In fact, there are at most five lines in the defining set of every triangle. For example, this triangle is created by these three vertices. Each vertex is created by two lines, and if you look at all the lines that define these vertices, the number of those lines is five, and that's maximum possible. The second property says that uh, for the triangle to appear in a bottom vertex triangulation, then all of the defining lines must be sampled. This property is obviously true, but the most important property of the bottom vertex triangulation is the last property, which says if the second property holds, in other words, if we have sampled all of the defining lines, and if we have not sampled all of the crossing lines that intersect the triangle, then this triangle will be created in a bottom vertex triangulation. To prove the third property, observe that the bottom vertex has a special uh, configuration that if you look at the edges that are adjacent to the bottom vertex, both of the edges are going upwards, which is natural because this is the lowest vertex of the cell. But if you look at the other two vertices of the triangle, one of the edges, uh, either both of the edges are going down, or one is going up, the other one is going down. In particular, in every cell, there is exactly one vertex with the property that both of its edges are going upwards inside the cell. 
So property three holds in a bottom vertex triangulation. You can show that, as we did in the previous video, that with this sampling approach, with uh, some good probability, we'll create roughly r squared triangles. Since the triangles cover the entire space, we have almost all of the properties of cutting. What it remains to show is that the number of triangles we create, um, well, is the, is the crossing number. Remember that we might end up with a few bad triangles. Let's look at this triangle in the picture and also in the original input. The set of lines intersecting this triangle, this gray triangle, is shown in blue. So the blue lines are the lines uh, that intersect this gray triangle and they make it a bad triangle. In other words, we, let's assume that the number of lines intersecting this gray triangle is too much. What we'd like to do is to create a smaller cutting inside this gray triangle. That's reducing the number of um, lines that intersect each of these smaller triangles. We call these smaller triangles sub-triangles. To figure out what kind of cutting to use, let's assume that the number of lines that intersect this bad triangle is t of delta times n over r. In other words, there is a factor t delta more lines intersecting this triangle than it should. We call t of delta the excess of this triangle. The cutting that we create inside the triangle is 1 over excess cutting. In other words, um, we create a 1 over t of delta cutting inside delta for the set of lines that intersect delta. In other words, the red cutting is defined only on the blue lines in the picture. It's easily seen that since the number of tri lines that intersect the tri triangle is t of delta times n over r, and we create a 1 over t of delta cutting, then each subtriangle intersects n over r lines. So the union of all the subtriangles will be a valid cutting. What it remains to do is to bound the size of this uh, cutting. A triangle with excess t of delta will create uh, t of delta uh, to the power of 3 subtriangles. Remember that I'm using the rough triangulation or rough cutting that uh, I assume in, in is known to exist. So the size of the cutting will be bounded by this formula where I sum up over all the triangles and I sum up the cube, uh, the excess raised to the power of 3. To get a handle on this um, size of the cutting, we do the following idea. We fix a value t and we like to estimate the number of triangles that have excess between t and 2t. Let's call the set of triangles that have excess between t and 2t with x of t. Let's look at the probability of delta that belongs to set x of t. Uh, let's look at the probability of such delta appearing in S. For, for delta to appear in S, I have to sample all the defining lines of delta, which will be P to the defining of delta, and I should sample none of the lines that intersect delta. And this will be 1 minus P to this power. Since the excess of this triangle is between T and 2T, this, pro uh, this probability is at most this much, where I substitute t for uh, t of delta. And using similar ideas as previous videos, you can bound this last term by e to the minus t. This means the expected number of triangles that have excess between t and 2t is bounded by this expression. Sum of all the triangles um, that have excess between t and 2t time uh, of, of the probability of that they, they appear in the cutting or in the sample. Let's remember this. To get to handle this uh, inequality, we need, need to run another experiment. So we pick another sample set S prime, where we sample each line in the original input with probability P prime, which is defined to be P over 2 times T. 
which is equal to r over 2n times n t. This part of the proof will uh, simulate the, the proof technique that we used for less than equal k level. So there are some familiar elements in both proofs. So to get a full understanding of this proof, it is better that you have a full understanding of the proof of the less than equal k level. At any rate, we look at the probability of delta appearing in the bottom vertex triangulation of S prime. This probability is equal to P prime to this defining of delta times this probability. Since the excess of this delta is at most 2t, you can see that this probability is at least this much. And again, using similar technique as previous videos, we can bound this last term using uh, 1 over 4. Thus, you can get that the, num the expected number of triangles in S prime is bounded by this expression. Let's also remember this. Finally, I will use the fact that the expected number of lines that I sample in S prime is um, r over t, and you can easily prove that the expected number of triangles that I create in the bottom vertex triangulation of S prime is roughly r squared divided by t squared. By putting these two inequalities together, we can obtain that r squared divided by t squared is at least uh, is bigger than this summation here. Now we replace the value of p prime. So p prime, remember, was p over two times t, and thus we get this. Now we, in this part of the inequality, we use the fact that uh, the findings of the wavy triangles at most five. So this two t in the denominator will be raised to power at most five, and thus this expression is larger than this expression. And now if you look at this expression, you will see that this summation over here is the same summation that appears over here. And thus we can replace um, this summation with this expression here. So we'll have that this summation is upper bounded by this theta notation. And it's also lower bounded by e to the t times the expected number of triangles with excess between t and 2t. And if you work it out, you'll realize that the expected number of triangles with excess between t and 2t will be upper bounded by this function. And now we can go back to the size of the cutting. The size of the cutting is a summation over uh, the excess of every triangle to the power 3 and we can be written in the following way. So we, we have a sum from t um, equals 1, where we count. Um, so this is the excess of the triangles that have excess between t and 2t. And this is the expected number of them. So this summation will again count the size of the cutting. And the e to the t function in the denominator will dominate the polynomial values of t in the, uh, in the denominator, so we'll have that uh, this summation will be bounded by r squared. 